ask you a, a different kind of question. Yeah. What would you say to somebody? Say you met a new eight-year-old. So they yeah. just found out they had a brain tumor. And they were really scared about it. What would you tell them? It's going to be okay. And I have one too. So um, it's going to be all right. Um, you have your family, your friends, um, you have everybody that is supporting you, to help you, to make you, like, feel good. Don't be scared, and just feel confident in yourself, and don't back down. Don't let it get in your way. I just saw that right out of my head. When Brady was nine months old, I had come home from work and I picked him up from my mom's like a normal day and he had an eye twitch. And she came over and she's like, yeah, I see it. Let's make an appointment on Monday. So I called Monday, they got him in on Wednesday. My family doctor in Omaha luckily didn't play it off as something. He says, well, I want you guys to get this checked out by an ophthalmologist. So we went to an ophthalmologist and he said, see nystagmus, MRI immediately. So a week later we did the MRI and they told us we'd know within four to five business days what the MRI said and we knew within 45 minutes Brady had a brain tumor. When I got my Build-A-Bear, the, the person that was making it had the same brain tumor as me. I told her I'm here for six weeks for radiation she's like, I had radiation. And then she told me her type of brain tumor. And then I said, I have the same one. And the neurosurgeon went in and said, if I wouldn't have done surgery, he would have only had a week to live. And he removed 70% of the tumor. And within 10 weeks after the surgery, 60% had grown back. At 10 months is when he started his first chemotherapy, and that approximately lasted 18 months. The way the oncologist explained it to me, the younger you are, the more it grows, because you're growing, and as you grow, it grows. It was July 2013 that his tumor started to show growth again. July 9th, 2013. I just have a little difference from my friends. They don't have to be in and out of hospitals. They didn't have to get surgery ear to ear. <laughs> and um, they don't need to get radiation. His life has been, I've tried to keep it as normal as possible, but I've also tried to make sure in life that I show him things. We took him to Florida so he could see the ocean because he is losing his vision. He has tunnel vision. Pretty much if you hold a paper towel tube up, that's what he sees. We did MRIs every three months and everyone until July was stable and it came back that it was growing. So we were out of options locally. I called my pediatrician and said, okay, I'm ready for the second opinion in Iowa. And that's when Dr. Sato called me and Dr. Bilotti and we set up appointments to come here in January. When I first met Brady, he and his family were aware of this disease very well. He's very bright and optimistic and knows about his illness very well, comfortable talking about his illness as well. That actually makes us treat children much easier and much more efficiently. So we feel like we were well connected to this family and we will be able to support this family well. All right, we're glad that you guys are here. And yeah, we're glad to be here. <laughs> I really am. It's, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we decided to come. Everyone had seemed to talk to each other. Nero had talked to radiation. Radiation has talked to oncology. They talked to ophthalmology. Everybody seemed very well coordinated. We walked into Dr. Bilotti's office you know, didn't waste any time and said the equipment's not available in the Omaha metro area and that it needed to be done here. As department, 
head, I do administrative duties. In addition to that, I spend a significant amount of time taking care of patients, both uh, pediatric patients or children and uh, adults with brain tumors primarily. So there's been a multidisciplinary clinic started where children with brain tumors can be seen uh, in combination with the pediatric hematology oncologist, the endocrinologists, the neuro-ophthalmologists, as well as neurosurgeons in, in the same place uh, while getting their imaging usually done immediately before that. And this is uh, very, very uh, convenient for patients, but um, I think very importantly, it allows the physicians taking care of these patients to interact and work together to optimize the treatments for each patient individually. My role within the clinic is that as children go to treatment with surgeries of the brain tumors or radiation therapy, the pituitary gland is, is right there uh, and can become affected so children can have problems with the hormones that are regulated at that level. You know, children can be seen by different specialties and every, everybody is disjointed. So having the multidisciplinary clinic is easier because everybody's right there so we can get updates about how are things going with the radiation, how are the imaging studies, if they have any concerns and if they need anything. Endocrinology is coming to radiation just to make it easier for us. That moment when we met with Dr. Sato on our very first initial appointment, she called neurosurgery and neurosurgery came over so we didn't have to meet with them the next morning. This really covers everything. It's really comprehensive. So you have the ophthalmology team, the neurologist, the oncologist, the, the neurosurgeon, even the neuropsychologist and psychiatrist. So it really, really focuses the, the child's visit, the family's visit, just to one time. Um, so it really minimizes the amount of travel it takes, especially in a state like Iowa where patients can be coming from very far. And you're seeing the, the top specialists in the field on that day. We can really coordinate all the care and everybody knows what's going on with the other part of the body, the other service. And so it's not like a week after I see the patient, I find out there's a change in the brain tumor. I know that day and I can feed back to the radiation oncologists or the neurosurgeons, you know, what I'm seeing so that they can tailor their care based on that. So I wanted to start the clinic so that patients can come here and see those disciplinaries in one day and if not two days. So we all discuss and then we everybody sees the patient and then we communicate what we think is going on with the patient. And so by talking together and knowing what our treatment does we can together choose the best treatment for each patient. They explain to us that surgery is not an option at this point. Brady's tumor is connected to his optic nerves and in his hypothalamus pituitary area. So surgery would cause immediate blindness. Brady's gonna start stereotactic fractionated radiation and to explain it to a regular person, that's a lot of beams, all divided up to down to the millimeter to the tumor itself. I'm just not scared at all. He is so excited. You, you're not allowed to be sad around him because He's never sad. He never says, why me? So coming here is a new start for him. And it makes me happy. It truly does. It's gonna be a long six weeks.